Hi guys, Redneck Computer Geek here. I've got my friend Ogletree's mud mower here because it needed to have a head gasket done on this Briggs. These Briggs are notorious for if you let them sit and the carburetor fills it up with gas, it eats through the side of the head gasket, which you can see right here is what it did. Blew that right out the side of it. All bad, junkies, whatever. So 10 bucks back up and running, no big deal. But... As a mud mower, it really should have simplified wiring, so that's what we're working on today. In the back, we've got a battery hooked up in order to be able to hunt down the 12 volts and stuff that we need. There's a couple of key points here that one should know if they're going to be wiring one of these. First of all, going into your switch, the red wire on that side is going to be your 12 volt lead coming in. That's important because that corresponds to this section of the wiring here. This red one here is going to have the diode. That is your charging wire. This one over here is going to be your running circuit for headlights and stuff. But the one that's going to matter the most for us is this red line here, which is this blue wire in this harness that's going to come back through. This orange wire is only going to have voltage when the engine is running. We're not going to be using it. The black wire is your kill wire, which is going to correspond to all of these black and white wires if you're dealing with a Craftsman chassis. And this gray wire is the bane of any off-roader's existence. This is a green uh, This is a positive feed which comes around and that positive feed goes to this solenoid switch in the bottom of your carburetor. If you're going to be off-roading these or you just want to be done with dealing with that stupidity, take this out, snip the tip off, screw it back in, and you're back to how every lawn tractor worked perfectly fine for 50 years before California got involved. There we go. Got that right there and a pair of good pliers. We'll come over here and see if we can get this to cut off. Done. EPA go bye-bye. Now, if you want to leave this in place, then this has to have 12 volts or else nothing will run at all. Because the solenoid shuts off the gas and without gas you don't run. Now if we come back over here, speaking of solenoids, so what you have right here is this little red line that is right here, and that little red line needs to correspond to the side with the diode right there. So that diode side is going to come out, and it's going to go into this. It's going to connect to this blue wire. That blue wire is going to feed back through and somewhere in this it connects to this red wire in order to be able to charge this. That needs to be maintained connected to this in order to charge back to your battery. This white wire needs 12 volts in order to kick over the solenoid and this black wire here that goes to this needs to go to ground. These two wires are regulated through all of these stupid safety switches. So we're going to bypass every single one of those safety switches in one go and make it so that you just use the key ignition. Also, if you want your headlight switch to work, the orange wire goes to your headlight switch and this brown wire goes to the headlight switch. This, you connect right directly onto your positive right here. Your brown is going to maintain coming down here and go to your headlights right there. So I'm going to go through, change up all the wiring, and then we're going to come back and show you it all finished. John, what are you eating? My first Sunday. From where? McDonald's. Is it any good? I wonder if anybody else thinks it's any good. Comment down below. Hot fudge sundae from McDonald's. Is it better or worse than Dairy Queen? It's interesting to note that 
Craftsman changed a few things in this wiring harness and I'd like to point them out just for reference for people. So what's interesting is this comes out with a blue wire and that blue wire on an old school Craftsman normally goes right directly to this. On this version, it doesn't. The blue wire goes up to here and then the red wire in back here loops down and goes to your charging circuit fuse and then that comes back up through and goes to this for charging. So that key has to be in the on position for this to actually be charging back through to the battery. Now obviously we can bypass that. We just take the blue wire and we put it to that side and it works. But in this case we're just going to leave it as it is because the ignition switch is working on this unit. The other thing I wanted to point out is that on this unit what's also different is this white wire here coming out of the ignition switch. This is your positive for triggering your solenoid. And it comes out and immediately goes over to here. It's really easy to find because if you have somebody hold the ignition switch to the starting position, it will be the wire that all of a sudden has 12 volts on it. So what I'm going to do is just clip this out and put a spade connection right there and call it good. And this just needs to be grounded to the chassis. There is a universal chassis ground down in the bottom, down in here, right there, that I could just connect into with this right here. And I might do that for simplicity. There we are, so I'm about to put the gas tank back in place and fire this thing back up. But I figured I'd show you everything all finished and ready to go. I ended up leaving the headlight so it would work just the way it normally does stock. This right here is the white, which is your ignition. The blue is your charge from the coil. The red is your outgoing to the charging circuit. The black and white wire is one of them turned out to be connected all the way down through and straight to that plug. So I didn't actually have to modify anything. This other one on the other hand, this free floating one, this was connected to all the safety switches. I have left this and I'm going to cap it off because he may or may not decide to go and put a kill tether on this machine. And if he does, this will be an easy way to put a kill tether on. This black wire here is now easily to ground. And I came in here and I consolidated the ignition kill ground and everything to a couple of different sources just to make sure that it should always work. At this point, we should be able to fire it up and call it good. Well, if we did everything right, we should be able to start it, stop it, and see a charging voltage. So right now we've got the voltmeter hooked up. We've got the 14 coming out of there. We should be able to start it. Valves need tuning. Alright, so outside of the valves needing to be tuned a little bit after doing the head gasket, I find this quite often. If you do the Chinesium head gaskets and stuff like that, a lot of times the valves for some reason need to be reseated afterwards. I don't know, these things are wonky. I'm not a fan of them. Alright, so obviously the exhaust valve is currently out of tune. That's the reason why it is it's not able to kick over is because it's not opening the exhaust valve soon enough. So I need to tighten that one up and then it should work. Oh yeah, that is horrifically loose. Look. So let's get that tuned in and then it should run okay. 
Alright, most of the time when you have a hard start like that, it's usually the exhaust valves need to be tuned. I think my battery pack is getting a little weak, but we'll see. Much better. So, we got some oil on it. It's going to have to burn off, so I'm going to let it do that. You guys have fun. Hope you enjoyed the video.